out on the homestead here, we're always looking for the resources that we have around us constantly. And one of the amazing resources that we have available here and in many parts of the United States is the black walnut tree. In some places, this is considered a weed tree. Different kinds of plants do not like to grow underneath a walnut tree. They're sort of poisonous through their root systems and they can be a real pain in your yard. You get all those walnuts in there and you run over them. It's terrible. But the walnut trees are an amazing resource because they're a wonderful furniture wood, they're great firewood, and they make a great dye material. One of the best and simplest dye materials that you can use, and they're always available to us. So we can dye with what's inside of a walnut tree. We can use the wood itself to dye things. We can use the bark alone to dye things. But really what I think is the best uh, item to use when we're dyeing is the walnut fruit that comes off of the tree. The nut, it comes off of the tree and it's like a lemon sized fruit, I guess we would call it because it's got a great big nut on the inside. But they come off and they're yellow green when they first fall off the tree have a wonderful kind of uh, citrusy smell to them almost. But as soon as they hit the ground, they, they start to rot. They start to turn brown and black. And if there's enough moisture, they just start to get all slimy. Here's one that's just really going bad on us. We can see what's inside here. It can stain your fingers a lot. You have to be kind of careful when you're dealing with these walnuts. Even when they're green, they will still stain you. This black staining stuff that is part of the walnut shell, the husk, is perfect for dyeing fabrics. Many things that we want to dye, um, the dye will immediately take a color onto the fabric, but will wash away very easily or will um, get faded from the sun very rapidly. They need different kinds of chemicals to set the dye into the fabric called mordants. Walnuts, they don't really need that at all. So they're a very simple sort of one-step dyeing process. And it was very common in the 18th century, in the 19th century, and even earlier. This, uh, the walnuts, maybe not black walnuts, but other kinds of walnuts were being used all over the world for dyes in the 17th century and probably hundreds of years before. So this is from the Country Dyer's Assistant in 1798, uh, Asa Ellis, to get a fawn color. This is a lightish sandy brown. Being very permanent, it is called one of the primitive colors. The better way to produce it is by observing the following recipe. For 20 yards of fulled cloth, take two pailfuls of walnut shells or husks, put them into a copper with clean water, let them boil thoroughly, then dip two or three times. Now add four ounces of crude or red tartar, dip again, and the color will be good and durable, obtained with ease and little expense. The shells of walnuts should be gathered and secured immediately after the nut is ripe. When he's talking about that part, um, securing that, that walnut at the right time of year, right now is the perfect time of year to gather walnuts for this process. So this is from the Dyer's Companion, 1815. It says, Black Walnut of North America. A black walnut of North America affords by its bark and the rinds of its nuts a dark brown coloring matter, which on the aluminous basis communicates to wool and cotton a sort of durable tobacco or chestnut brown, and with solutions of iron, a brown considerably darker. My experiments, however, with this vegetable have been few. Uh, Damberny says that with a nitromurate of bismuth, <laughs> it gave a wool a very lasting puce or flea color. A lot of people were experimenting with this sort of in a scientific manner in, say, the early 19th century. We're just gonna take those walnut hulls and we're gonna put them in sort of a, some kind of a vessel and add some water and sort of just let them ferment. Just let those kind of percolate for a couple of hours or maybe a week or two. Then we can put them in our brass pot with some extra water and boil them. Oh, maybe two, three, four hours. And then 
our dye material will be about right. We can strain off all those extra, you know, the nuts that might still be in there and the extra hulls so that we just get to that sort of black fluid. So walnut dyeing is very, very simple, uh, but it certainly takes a couple of different components to get it done. We've got our first pot here, which is our washing solution or our scouring pot. And this has a washing solution of sodium carbonate or washing soda. In the time period, they might have just used something like lye, a light uh, solution of that. You want to get all the oils off, off of whatever you're dyeing. So you're going to dunk it in here first, and this is nice and warm. Our next is the dye pot itself. This has our dye stuffs in it, and then the items that we want to dye we'll put in here and we'll leave in that pot for any amount of time, maybe 15 minutes, maybe six hours. If this starts to run out, if we're doing lots of items, we can refill with this nasty walnut uh, goo over here in that wash tub. And then in the background, we have where we're, our, our final washing station, where we're gonna rinse the dye out of our items. And if we were doing this in a large situation, we were doing a, a many items, we would probably set this whole thing up by a flowing stream or river so that it'd be very easy to wash the items clean. So this uh, walnut dye is always going to give us this kind of brown uh, leaning, sometimes more red, sometimes more gray. Uh, but the shade, the depth of that color has to do mostly with how long we leave it in this dye pot. And if we just put it in the dye pot for a few minutes, something that starts out very, very white will turn a nice light shade of uh, say tan color in just a couple of minutes, really two or three minutes, and it already has this initial dyeing uh, walnut color. If we want it to get a little deeper, we just really leave it in a longer period of time. We can get about the maximum depth of color with this unchanged uh, formula, as it were, about six or eight hours. After that, it really isn't going to add anything more. We might be able to speed this up a little bit by taking items out, rinsing them, letting them dry, putting them back in and dyeing them several times to get a deeper shade. But without adding some additional kind of components, this sort of medium brown is about all we're gonna get out of this. Well, we've had a great day experimenting here on the homestead with the dyeing process. And here's one of the shirts uh, that we dyed. This started off as uh, not the cleanest shirt in the world. And we thought, you know, hey, well, maybe a little dyeing will make it look a little better. And yes, it certainly looks consistent. We'll call it that. I also wanted to do experiments with some fabric that was um, already kind of colored. So we started off with this kind of strange minty green fabric and this is what it dyed into 
Uh, and actually, I really like the way that one turned out. So very much more muted, the green and the, uh, the brown background ended up looking really good. And we started off with a super bright blue uh, with uh, the white flowers on the inside. And that died up into a very, very uh, nice and subtle sort of took the edge off the blue and gave us a nice uh, dark, uh, darker kind of tan background. Now, most of these were dyed about an hour or so. And I'm sure we could continue to get a, a darker hue if we left it in the pot for four, six, you know, maybe eight hours. But I thought we'd, you know, get done here so we could see it before the end of the day. Um, a great experiment. Again, testing out and using the resources that we have around us. Even if we have almost nothing, we have these beautiful uh, walnut trees here. Now we can we can use the hulls for dyeing, and we can use the the walnuts themselves for food. And of course, we have the wonderful wood. So a lot of resources that come out of a walnut tree. Thanks for joining us today uh, as we experiment with the resources that we have and uh, try out all these wonderful things. If you want more episodes like this, I do encourage you to check out Townsend's Plus, where we have lots of different kinds of videos that you might not always see on YouTube. And of course, uh, we have lots of other homestead videos, so check out this one.